Good morning, everyone. We're continuing here in the laws of Kashrus of Rabbi Yom Enforced, and we perhaps will round up the halachas today of Tevilas Kalim. Hashimush Bechli Betem Hukba, using a kli before you took it to the mikvah. Kvar Kesavnu Lamayla Kiafilu Kli Shiev Shalad Bilay Me'ezatam. We explained previously a kli that you can't be toivo, for whatever reason it might be. You cannot use it unless you're toivalet. Even if you already cooked it a hundred times and you were not yet toivalet, it is going to be usher to use until you actually are toivalet. So if you have kalim in the house, a person should know these things. You have kalim in your house and you never toivaled them, you got to bring them to the mikveh, even though they're already part of your your set of plates or your dishes or your pots or your pans, they still need to feel them. Now, din kli chashmali, what about electric kalim? We spoke about this in a previous year, what I told you over from my rebeim, and here we're pretty much on the, in, the, in the same train of thought as we're forced. Kli chashmali tzarech gam kindvila. Electric vessels also need to be toivol. V'yav shechayish lekilkul even though that you're concerned that by putting it in the water it might get ruined. According to most of the place game, there is no heter, there's no permissibility without toiling them first. However, if you don't put the food onto the main part of that kli, but there's a different vessel that's acting as a hefsek, as a, a block between the food and the rest of the kli, then the whole thing doesn't need tevila. For example, a little toaster oven. You can pull out the tray and the racks that are there, where you put the food on, and you can be told that, that's enough. So this is a good thing to know. When you have a toaster oven, a little one with a door, and you can open the door and take out the tray and take out the pan that you're going to be cooking on, and that's where the food touches. Those are the only things that need tevila in that case, and it doesn't need any more tevila. But daim is similar to the plata chashmali, your hot plate that you have for Shabbos. You don't put the food directly onto the plata. It's always in pots. It's in pans. It's on top of something. If you have a metal, if you have an electric kind of a kedera pot, and there's inside, there's another pot that can be taken out, then you take out the kli that's on the inside, and that's the one you take. For example, sometimes a rice cooker, the outer part is, is, is all the electric, and you have a, a bowl that you put inside, where you're going to end up cooking the rice. So just toivel the bowl from the inside, the rest of it you don't have to. Ach, im gufa kli kol kli. However, and this is what we discussed previously, if the food's going to touch the vessel itself that we're dealing with, then you have to be toivel the whole thing. Im kli So if you're concerned over here that by putting water in there, it's going to end up ruining the kli, as we said before. He writes also, you don't really have to worry, and that is because if you let it dry out over several days, it's not going to damage the coil or the electrical system that is there. It's going to be just fine. Um, I'll, and, um, fine. and he writes, kli shiafshalat bilo biyecha ma'afanim eilu lo yikneho. And if you have a kli, if you have a vessel that is hard, to be toivel, you're going to have to, he's going to give you a different piece of advice of what to do later on. Okay, mecha mayim chashmali, you have a, the urn, the hot water urn. Kli chashmali shoifim boy vafalim. Kli shoifim boy popcorn, you have the popcorn maker, you have the waffle maker, you have the uh, sandwich maker. Kulam tzichim tevila bebracha, you have to make, you have to do tevila with a bracha. But derechali in keli melu nizakim be tevila, that will not get damaged with the water. For one for one time, just let them dry out for a few days, everything will be fine.
Okay, everything will be fine. Yesh mi shemata nishtamesh betoaster. There are those who say that a toaster, like the one that you press down the pieces of bread, over there, there are, those, there are some who say you can do it without tevila. Kilo nechiv uda. It's not really considered to be a vessel that's being used for the meal, because you could eat shiachol nechol es halechem afshein atzanim. Even if you didn't toast the bread, you could eat the, You could eat it. You could eat it cold, and you could eat it soft. You like it when it's toasted, and therefore there are those that would like to be mekel in that particular area. Yesh amnam. However, there are those that are cholkim that argue. Oim shechayiv tevila. No, no, no. It still needs tevila. It still needs to be put in the um, put into the mikvah, and once again put it in. Pour out all the water afterwards and let it dry out for a few days and you are good to go. Now what about this one? What if you have a kli? You cannot be toivlet. You have a kli that you have to use. You want to use it and you can't, be, you can't put it in the mikvah. But for example, these Keurig machines, they are, it's not just that it's a plug-in, it's that the whole face of the machine is all, uh, it, it's all digital. And if you put something digital into, into the mikvah, what's going to happen? It is going to get ruined. So what do you do? You, there's no way to put this into the mikvah, and, and you still need it. So what do you do? Here's the, here's the piece of advice. Take your Keurig machine, give it to a goy, to a non-Jew, and it also has to be so someone that's not from your own house. I guess it cannot be your regular cleaning lady over here. So you give it to the non-Jew as a complete gift, and then you say to them, do you mind if I borrow that for myself? And then it's always like you have the non-Jew's vessel in your house, and you're using his, which doesn't require tevila. You should, however, you should ask your local Orthodox rabbi before you do this, Meaning, it's a hetter that we only want to rely upon if there's no other choice. So I believe something like a Keurig machine makes it, there is really no other choice. You will destroy the machine by putting the digital part inside of there, and the connected to the digital part usually is the parts that have to go into the mikvah. So you're stuck, and therefore you should go, and if you want to use Keurig, give it to the non-Jew, it becomes his. You're now borrowing it back from him. That says, uh, force. That would be okay. Have a wonderful day.